Welcome to this uh, camera an introduction here and interview. I don't know if there's another one on YouTube uh, like this one. But what I have here is a camera from 1967. It's a, uh, an Olympus. It was the uh, Japanese manufacturer. And back in the 60s, they liked their cam 35 millimeter cameras large. And this would be the mid 60s. This is from 67. Uh, back when this camera was sold, I would say uh, most of the Japanese uh, manufacturers that I'm familiar with. Um, this is a modern lens cap, but let's move on. Here she is. 1967 Olympus 35. LC. If you were uh, shopping for a camera like this back in the uh, day, 1967, you had some choices. Uh, when you think of two to come to mind, are going to be the Minolta Hymatic 7 series, which with the, uh, the early versions were quite large, like this camera is. Uh, later on, it became quite small. The other camera that comes to mind is the uh, Konica Auto S2, which I did have for a while. Uh, she, uh, or it, let's call it an it, basically came with a uh, fixed 35mm rangefinder camera with a fixed lens. That means you do not take the lens off. Uh, this one, for its day, was very well spec or even today, it was very well, it's very well specced. Uh, it's a uh, G Zuko Olympus uh, 1.7 lens that uh, focal length, not focal length, focal length 42 uh, millimeters, but the f stop goes down to 1.7. Relatively fast lens. Uh, the G Zuko signifies <coughs> seven elements because G is a seven uh, letter in the alphabet. If it was a F Zuko, it'd be five. Nope, excuse me, six. E Zuko would be five, but long story short, uh, this uh, lens has uh, seven elements, five different groups. So, it's a rangefinder camera. You can usually tell a rangefinder camera by this side window, or closer to the center of the lens, window that's over here, and it's smaller. Than the viewfinder window. When you look through a rangefinder, one looks through this uh, window that's off to the side here. Okay, before I start talking about the uh, uh, the lens, I'm going to go over th uh, the controls of the camera. I'm going to introduce uh, something that I don't know if it looks smaller in front, but let's do a side by side. Uh, back in the day. This camera's for 67. This camera is now 70 years old. It's from 1950. Back in the day, a 35 millimeter rangefinder camera was supposed to be compact. And somewhere in the 19, late 1950s, early 1960s, uh, camera industry, I think, lost the. Uh, I have a 32, uh, 1932 Leica uh, 2 that's about, mm, I'm going to say it's close to 90 years old. It'll be 90 years old in 2022. Much smaller than this camera. Takes very good a photo. Uh, this uh, Kodak Retina, it's a folder. And the reason I'm showing it is all the controls of this camera are located along the shutter. So you're focusing your um, shutter speed. Let's see if that was easy. I'm going to try the aperture. You can't see unless I do this. Aperture setting is down here. And the reason all those controls are along this uh, lens barrel is because the shutter itself is a leaf shutter. This has a leaf shutter as well. And the fixed uh, 
lens range finders, originally, all were folders. Uh, well, not all, but the majority were. And this genre, in the 1950s, tended to disappear, and in its place, I'm going to use this uh, poor filter one more time, uh, a fixed lens rangefinder that we saw in the middle 1950s, 1960s, all the way through the 1970s, and this is the last of the genre that, uh, do I have my pencil? I hope uh, my focus, focus is uh, good. So, shutter speeds up here. Uh, notice I'm moving the aperture at the same time. I hate to tell you, but that was designed that way. Uh, they really liked, if they wanted to change their shutter speed and they already knew the exposure was correct on the camera. This camera has a light meter with no battery in it right now. I'll get to that. Uh, basically, you could grab both the shutter ring and the aperture ring together and keep the same light value. So was the theory. In practice, uh, it was a bit more fiddlier than that. So I'm going to leave it at 30th of a second. Your aperture ring on this has no click stops. And I, uh, I can't tell if there's a mask in there or not. I'm, uh, I don't know if this uses some kind of electrical contact or um, a uh, series of masks that go in front of the uh, uh, photo cell to uh, determine uh, what the proper exposure should be set. It's got a nice little focusing lever in the back. Uh, that's pretty nice. That's kind of like the retina I showed you. And that's about it on the controls except for there is a uh, self timer which I will never set. Uh, there's a reason for that. Sometimes it gets stuck. And this is awkward. But we'll try it. And down here, this is very important if you want to use the light meter, is you do have uh, a film setting speed. It sets, you have to set the film speed to, uh, in the old days it was called ASA. Nowadays it's ISO. I call it ISO. If you're one of those people that are younger than me and call it ESO, I'm more power to you. I won't be along, around much longer. So about 20 years from now, you won't have me to uh, listen to. Um, ISA setting, ISO setting on this was uh, all the way down to 10 because they had some slow color film back then to uh, ISO 800. So if you're setting this, uh, if you're going to set it up for a, uh, to use light meter, you need that control. So all the controls are on the lens barrel. On the bottom of the camera, we have a film reset. And I don't know. I'll try a quarter. And you got a battery compartment. This one I just sanded recently. Uh, it's showing its age. Okay. Nowadays, we try to sell you this guy here. This is a EPX 625G alkaline battery. The original battery was a PX 625 and it was a mercury battery. Haven't made those since at least around 2000 and if the Chinese were making them in 2000 they were illegal. Uh, basically they're banned. The original battery for this is banned. What I like to use instead is a um, I better bring my this is rated at 625. Uh, the reason you don't use alkaline is alkaline's uh, discharge curve as you're using a camera such as this you may start out at uh, uh, 1.5 volts uh, 5 minutes later it might be at 1.45 uh, 10 minutes later it might be at 1.40 which is actually close to the 1.35 volts the voltage is not stable on an alkaline. Uh, you want to use silver oxides, and to use a silver oxide, I use an adapter. It's called an MR9 adapter. And all I'm doing right now is this fetal exercise 
to see if I can get this light meter to work. And bear with me. Alright. MR9 adapter. Probably, uh, I don't know if the camera will let me come close enough to show it. But if it does, more power to it. What I'm trying to show is that in there, there is a little diode. In this case, it's a uh, Schottky diode. And what that does is step down the uh, voltage from this. Uh, what I just put in was a uh, silver oxide cell. So it's two pieces. Voila. Voila. Yeah, big fingers, man. Big fingers. I think the uh, positive side goes out. And now, while on camera, I get to see if uh, I can actually put a battery cover on this. Uh, this camera is built to a cost back then. I'm not saying it's junk, I'm just saying it's that it's um, the fitting of the camera uh, components. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope I got it without cross threading. Cross threading sucks. Uh, to tell you the truth. So, okay, it's got a battery in there. And we're going to pause for just a second and come back. Okay, the reason I paused for uh, just a second and I'm, I'm back is I wanted to go get a, uh, oops, it's set to uh, incident. Uh, we want ref this is a reflective meter on the camera, so let's set this to reflective. And I just want to take a light meter reading. And I have to bring it closer to me to read it, but, uh, oh, somewhere about, I don't know if the camera can focus that close. F-stop uh, 4 and shutter speed of 15, I should see the neat meter come to light. So, I actually should have, it is there, it is there. This is showing, let's go... 15 and 4. Oh, bad on the money. Okay. My criticism of this camera, I think it's faster to use the camera with uh, an external meter. You just kind of look at your external meter and set everything up without having to fiddle. The uh, reason I bring this up is this very little wiggle room. Okay, here it's very, see how it goes off the scale, if you get your finger in front of it, that's one thing, the photocell is right here, in the front, if you get your finger, it's just awkward to use, is what I'm getting at, um, very limited range, um, if I was to get, um, if I was to go to, f-stop 8 uh, you would think you have a dead meter if I went to f-stop 2.8 you wouldn't know if you have a dead meter or if it's uh, totally overexposed so the very narrow range that this, uh, this is called a it's not a match needle it's called a zero centering needle and you have to look it up but basically uh, for 1967 even, this would not have been my favorite meter. Uh, the only plus side on this is the uh, meter reading is visible if you don't wear glasses. I wear glasses pretty uh, much from inside the viewfinder. So, let's compare this with another camera that has this exact same lens. And uh, that's called the Olympus 35 SP. Uh, compared to the SP, this is even more fiddly. But the reason I'm comparing it to the 35 SP, the 35 SP has its metering cell. There's an advantage to having it inside the filter ring. So if you put a colored filter on, it. Uh, doesn't screw up the meter reading. 
But long story short here, hey, what happened to my meter? There we go. Um, long story short, on the Olympus 35 SP, the metering cell is way out here where nobody loves it, but there's two things I love about it. Number one, I don't have this fiddly ASA control lever over here on the uh, lens barrel that I can't see and can't get to unless I have the camera upside down. Uh, the Olympus 35 SP has its adjust adjustment wheel over here. It's larger, easy to read. Also, the um, metering cell being way over here, usually when you hold your hand, uh, right hand on the camera, you won't be touching that. The third thing I want to say about the Olympus 35 SP, which in my, even though it has the same lens, has a different aperture ring. And the aperture ring on the uh, Olympus 35 SP has click stops, which I much prefer than this uh, clickless aperture here. Clickless aperture, you can easily knock it with your finger while you're focusing. And I uh, <clears throat> have to go back, set the exposure all over again. Um, can't think of what else I want to say about this camera versus the 35 SP. 5 SP has a spot meter function. If that really turns you on, uh, it may be more accurate, so I shouldn't I shouldn't diss it. Uh, the lens, the light meter on this, and the normal light meter on the, and you're not using a spot spot meter function on the SP. It's an averaging meter, and that means it's averaging through the whole frame. So if you have something far away that's very bright, like an actor on stage, and more than half of the frame is, is darkness, but the stage is lit up. Uh, you can't trust it, either light meter. On the Olympus 35 SP, uh, if I was using an ISO 400 film, I would immediately set the ISO to uh, ISO 800. That's just, just to shorten the exposure uh, that you're taking. On this, it's it's real fiddly. You wouldn't do it, and especially in a uh, theater setting like that. Uh, quietness. How quiet is the camera? It's not too shabby, actually. Uh, loading film. I'm not going to load film. Uh, this is a called a PC port, and that's where you plug in your flash. Or you plug in your flash, put your flash here, and uh, that's called a hot shoe. Uh, neither the hot shoe or the PC port work on this because uh, I forgot one other control, and that's right here. This little button, no long, longer functions. What it was meant to do was to turn the light meter on and off. Uh, I don't know if I can get this close enough to the camera, but uh, the light meter is on right now. Oops. Let's get it down here. I don't know if I can get this close enough to the camera that you can see it, but the light meter is on right now. And as soon as I put the uh, lens cap on, it turns off the light meter. You see it dropped. Uh, basically, uh, that's a disadvantage to this camera. The 35 SP has the same problem in that whenever you take the camera out of a bag or take the camera out of its case uh, the light meter is on all the time but on this one they used to have a way to t just turn it on turn it off I wish they would have had a sliding switch but to um, f finish this up loading film I just pulled that out as far as we go hope it's self-explanatory guys because uh, I'm about out of breath and that pretty much all I have to say on this uh, vintage 35 millimeter fixed lens uh, rangefinder camera from Olympus. It's I guess this would be the poor man's 35 SP if you want to look at it that way because they both have the same lenses. 
or uh, it is what it is on its own. Usually these sell for, I don't know, untested, definitely under $100. The Olympus 35 SP, uh, tested, I mean, somebody's ran some film through lately, uh, could go 200 250 bucks easy. So the Olympus 35 SP is uh, twice the price of this, tad smaller, it would be my preferred camera, but I happen to have this. So that's a wrap. Thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.